Hey guys, welcome back to another video and I hope you are all okay on that side of the screen or on that side of the screen. It doesn't matter as long as you are okay. And today we are going to take a closer look at the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, especially in terms of video editing and rendering and compare it, of course, with the CPU that I use, which is my i7 8700K and also a bit quite off but my Mac Mini, which is a machine that I use on a daily basis. So I thought, what the hell, why not? So we have three different CPUs to talk about in five different tools. But before we do, one of those tools is Filmora, which is the sponsor of today's video. And it's a software about video editing on Mac or on Windows. It doesn't matter the system that we use. Really easy for beginners, but it has, besides all the basic tools, a lot of advanced features. So once we get used to the software and we want to do more complex jobs, then there will be the tools for it. Now it has a lot of filters, text, transitions, music overlays and other elements. But if you feel that they are not enough, then Filmora also has uh, effects library stores that we can enrich our library. I will leave a link down below so that if you want to check it out, it has a free trial. You can test it and see if you like it or not. And that's about it. Regarding results, I'll leave some results on today's video regarding the machine that I'm using with this CPU and Filmora. It's one of them. Now let's start talking about some benchmarks, which is usually here. We cannot do it without benchmarks. Now starting with Geekbench 5, as you guys can see right over there, in terms of the fast Test results they are going with the i7 8700k and we are talking about single core and multi core results both of them are faster on the i7 now not by much but you can see a difference right over there now moving to cinebench we can see that the amd is on the front with 3516 while the i7 has 3313. Now I'm not going to mention a lot the Mac Mini, it's just out of curiosity because it's a machine that I use but the CPU is completely off the charts. And here one thing that I would like to mention before we move on is that in terms of pricing this is completely off as well. We are talking about 180 euros at this moment and roughly 3 150 360 and if we go to the latest version which is the 9700 then we are going a bit higher of course different cpus but what i want to achieve is with a cpu such as this one which has half the cost can we get similar performance to something more expensive and this is the goal of this video and this was the goal of all my testings now starting with a compression of a video using handbrake and to do that what i did was to get a 4k video file h264 codec with 30 frames per second and i wanted to squeeze it to a 1080 file with the same setting so that's what we want to achieve and that's what i did on all the tests 4k timeline and then uh, render it to a 1080 QuickTime H264 8-bit video and the results are the ones as following. Now in terms of handbrake as you can see on the screen the i7 takes 11 minutes to render this 10 minute file and the AMD gets 11 minutes and 50 seconds so not that much and then the Mac mini finishes last with 14 minutes. Now moving to After Effects what I do is a, I use a template that I did quite a while back. It's a heavy template so not all machines will react the same way but this is a very CPU intensive task and what we can see there is that the AMD takes the lead it renders this file in 12 minutes and 30 seconds followed by the Intel with 12 minutes and 38 and then the Mac mini uh, later on now moving to Adobe Premiere what we can see right over there is a huge difference and we are talking about for the side of the Intel we are talking about half the time which is crazy and i did repeat the test just to make sure that there was nothing wrong and yes that is the result so my suspicion here or my suspicion here to be more precise is that intel quick sync 
and the optimization of the software is a lot better uh, for the Intel side than on the AMD. Now, this is something that can change tomorrow because I do believe that this is software integration instead of the raw performance of the CPUs. But nonetheless, at this moment, Adobe Premiere, you're taking about half the time. And here I have to say that if you are someone that works exclusively with Adobe Premiere most of your time, then you should think on the best CPU that you can get for the money. Otherwise, uh, the story is a little bit, bit different. But here, the clear winner is the Intel CPU. Now, the Mac Mini takes quite a lot more, as you could see. Moving to DaVinci Resolve, which is also a great editing tool. There was a surprise on the Mac Mini side, which was the fastest machine of this test. As you could see right over there, 6 minutes and 40 for the Mac Mini, and then 740 for the i7 and 754 for the AMD. Now here, the only thing that I can say is that I do believe that the software is a lot better or a bit better integrated on Mac OS systems than on Windows. And this is something that we have to realize that different operating systems, different hardware will behave differently with the same software. So this is an example on how we can achieve something faster with a weaker CPU software and firmware implementation, something really, really amazing. And this is a great example. So DaVinci Resolve here did a great job. Now moving to the final test, which was on Filmora, as you guys can see right over there, seven minutes and 50 for the i7, followed by the Mac mini with 11 minutes and 40. And then once again, on the AMD taking 12 minutes and 10 seconds. And here my suspicion is, is once again on the Intel Quick Sync side that is well implemented with this software and it works faster regardless if the CPU is stronger or not. Now, just out of curiosity, I also tested out on Final Cut Pro 10, which is the tool that I use on a daily basis and the result was seven minutes and 50. Now, I still haven't used this CPU to try a Akintosh, but I will do on the following week. So I will share it as soon as possible. Not only the solution to put it to work, but also some rendering times to see if it makes a difference or not using the exact same system on Windows or using on Mac OS. And that is it. Hope that this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.